Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another uh, On the Air with Intentional Guy. We're actually here today with Carrie Green. Carrie, thank you so much for coming on with us today and talking with us. Uh, Carrie is a Bible teacher, retired pastor. I saw where uh, you and your wife had traveled uh, in an RV for several years there. Uh, sounds like a lot of exciting exciting things today. And I'm just looking forward to talking to you uh, about how we as men and women can become a little bit more intentional in our life with Christ and yeah. everything. So Carrie, if you don't mind, share just a little bit about you and let's just start this conversation off. Yeah, well, I am what I often refer to as a, a redneck kid from Texas who just happened to be blessed by the grace of God to become a pastor. I never in my wildest dreams thought that would be the case. I kind of grew up in a church where the pastor that was serving that church was not really someone I wanted to be like because he was kind of a domineering, heavy handed guy. And I, I just never thought that would be me and didn't right. want that to be me. But through the years, through my college career, the Lord really redirected me away from some business pursuits and away from some music pursuits into the pastorate uh, along the way, got married to a gal I met in college, my wife, Mindy, and we've been married now for 33 years, have five kids, five uh, grand boys at this point, and are just loving life. The Lord has redirected me a couple of times in my life from one pastoral position to another, uh, some steps of faith we had to take. And now we've stepped out of pastoral ministry to a local congregation and over the last four to six years, he's kind of guided me into an online teaching ministry that has really exploded. And uh, we're having uh, the blessing of seeing great fruit come from that. So, you know, that's it in a big nutshell. Uh, but but I'm just pleased to be here with you, Michael. Well, thank you so much um, for being here and, you know, and sharing with us tonight some of the things that you're uh, involved in and that can help us with it. I see you're you're an author, do a podcast and all that. And, and we'll talk about that podcast a little bit more, but I would love to hear some of the materials. I, I told you before we started broadcasting, I'm, I was never a reader before. One, I felt stupid. I felt like I couldn't read. Um, there's just a lot of lies the enemy put in my life. Mm -hmm. But as I started wanting to become more intentional and especially as a leader for my family and everything else, I learned that God's given us some great resources in books. And I started off with audible books because I was traveled a lot. And so I did a lot of audible books. But now I, I also, once I started pouring into me, it's all about what we pour into ourselves, I believe. And so once I start pouring into those uh, positive books and things like that, I just start seeing a growth and my mindset change. And I no longer was stupid, no longer was this guy that couldn't do this. And so now I removed that stronghold. And so I like encouraging uh, my listeners to read, read as much as you can. We're bringing authors on here all the time because we, we want uh, to bring some great books to you. I think it's really important what we pour into us. Yeah. And you were talking about one um, that helps us uh, talking about us being an elder and things like that. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, that's a book that kind of came out of my own desperation at a certain point. I was a pastor of a church and had inherited essentially no elder team of any sort and believed the biblical model is for a pastor to be alongside elders. So there's accountability and partnership and ministry and those sorts of things. So I started researching, just like you, Michael, trying to find books to help me understand right. what this role should be and, and how to go about finding and selecting men to be elders. And there were just a few books out there and they were mainly about what the role was and none of them actually helped you figure out how to identify possible men to serve as elders, how to assess them, how to go through an evaluation that, that eventually could lead to them becoming elders. And so I just little by little started putting together resources of my own and it really did just kind of accidentally become a handbook that I was using with these men. And then someone encouraged me to put it into print and I did so. And it's really proven to be a pretty significant resource for a lot of smaller churches, especially who are looking for some help in getting 
a handle on how to mainly identify, assess, and equip men for the role of elder. Yep. What do you think is one of the biggest hindrance for guys trying that keeps us from wanting to take on that role or look at that role? Yeah, I think that's a great question because I think for every guy, it's a little bit different, but some of what you described in your own journey, I think is part of it. And that is that people feel inadequate. They feel, well, I don't have a Bible degree. I've never been uh, one to feel a calling toward ministry, but I think that's all predicated on a misunderstanding of what ministry is in the first place. Ministry was never meant to be a profession. Ministry is any act of service and love that we as believers in Christ uh, express toward one another or express to someone else who is uh, an object of God's love, which is all of humanity. And so ministry is nothing more than loving your neighbor as you would love yourself. And mm. the role of an elder is a more official role in a church where a man is coming alongside the leadership team that maybe is professional ministers, although there's problems with that term as well. But, right. you, you know, just coming alongside the leadership team to help that local fellowship become as healthy as it can be, become as spiritually uh, vibrant as it can be, and then set its sights outward to start ministering to people in the community. And that's great because I think a lot of times we get mixed up in our head that ministry has to be with inside the walls of the church as yeah. a full-time paid position. And I had that mindset. I was I was in a, in a pastoral role and all that. And I was like, you know, God took me out of that. I'm like, what are you doing? And in the last couple of years, I realized that my life is a ministry. Mm -hmm. That that's what God's called me to do, to live a life for him. And since I've been able to do that, I found out that one, I'm actually a better part of my church and my community within the side of the church, because as I'm understanding that role, it, it, it takes you away from yourself uh, for one thing and into ministry and to helping others, pe other people. But what's been really vital for me is realizing that my journey is unique to other people's journey. So we yeah. each bring something else to that table. And it's very important to share that and to use that uh, when when we're building. I, I think ministry is nothing more than building relationships. Yeah. yeah. And that's what Christ did when he was here. He, he was building relationships. And that's what we need to do. Yeah. And keying off the name of your show. I mean, it's building relationships with intentionality. It's building relationships for the sake of building into others and in doing so in a way that guides them and points them toward the one who really is the answer to all of our needs, and that's Jesus himself. So I, I totally agree with you, Michael. Relationships with that focus of intentionality toward Christ is, is essential for any kind of ministry. Yeah. And, you know, there's... I, I'm in this men's group now that has a lot of accountability. We have a lot of accountability with one another. And I find that's helping me to thrive even more because it's having, it's something about having a very authentic relationship with another person who our goals are like minded hmm. that helps us in our journey. Yeah. Right. And then, yeah, but absolutely. also helps us as, as being a good leader. And I think one of the problems for me, me was I never saw myself as a leader that, mm. uh, you know, I, I, you said it a, a minute ago, uh, I had a feeling of inadequacy uh, about being a leader and all that comes from the enemy that all comes from, from lies, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, if we went off of, well, I'm not, you know, uh, What's, what's the right word? I, I, I'm not qualified. Well, none of us are yeah. qualified. Yeah. If, if we look at it, we all come with flaws. We all come with it, but those flaws are unique and how we battle those flaws do qualify us. That's what God wants because yeah. that's how we're going to help others. Yeah. And you know what, Michael, what's interesting is over the last 25 to 30 years, we've had kind of this explosion in the leadership development field where all kinds of books and all kinds of seminars and all kinds of courses have come out about developing leadership in others and in yourself. And I think there have been tremendous benefits from that, but there have also been 
some negative impact of that. And one of the things is exactly what you're saying. I think it has kind of made people feel like if I haven't taken this official course or gone to school or gotten this degree, I can't be a leader because it obviously is this very involved thing if there's so much being said about it. But really, Michael, the simple truth is that leadership is about initiative. Leadership is not about having all the answers. It's not about being the one at yes. the top of the pecking order. And it's not about being the one who gets to make all the decisions or, or co make people comply with your decisions. Leadership is about initiative. It's, it's seeing a need, taking initiative to figure out a way to meet that need, whether that's just by yourself or with a group. And you're a leader. Yes. Yes. And, and all you have to do is just be present. Hmm. That, that's really a big part of it. I see so many men today who are just not present. They're more present in their work. They're more present in their career. But when it comes to their church, when it comes to their family, yeah. they're kind of absent. And I, I and I say that because I was that guy. I, hmm. I can say that. And that's where intentional guy came from, because I, re I realized that God gave me a word one year and it was to be intentional. And that changed everything mm. in my life. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. to be that. But I would really want to encourage people. You got to just be present because God's going to equ to equip you. And I loved it. My pastor said, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips those he calls. That's right. And so God's going to equip you. It's just you've got to take the steps to do that. How would you encourage people, Carrie, to um, some of our listeners that are, are sitting here? I, I know I've talked to a lot. I, I've got some friends who are just in a mess right now. They're going through relationship, divorce, um, things like that. But I'm like, I, I told one of my friends, but you can still be a leader even in the midst of that, because how you decide to walk that journey, others are watching and seeing and, and, you know, we're a leader, whether you want to be a leader or not, Le leader, being a leader is having a, an influence over someone. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it simply is. It's, it's that influence. Um, so how would you, we're, how, how do we make it more than just a word? How do we yeah. make it more? How do we make it more in an action? How do you encourage other men to take this role seriously as far as leadership goes? You know, I think for me, the things that have, have caused me to recognize the role of leadership that I have is a, a, a significant thing are, first of all, my accountability before the living God. You know, there, there's a, a point at which I'm going to stand before him and give an account for the role that he's placed me in and the responsibilities and people he's placed under my care. And in thinking of it in that context, that, that I will give an account for the care that I have taken for the people under my care under my watch. So it's a, it's not a role of dominance. It's not a role no. of figuring out all the problems. It, it is a role of caring for the people under my authority. And so that care takes all kinds of forms. It's in how I love them. It's in how I help them think through their issues. It's in how I support them in the challenges and even opportunities of their lives. It's not... Uh, a thing that that really is all that intimidating it's just doing what we as men really want to do in the first place and that is be the knight in shining armor who comes in and 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 helps in this situation in the way that is particularly needed at that time we have something in us that god's wired us with to be a provider to be a protector to be one who makes a difference in the lives of of our wives and our children and we don't recognize because of yeah. the kind of culture we live in, we still have that opportunity every single day. It just looks different than we yes. might have imagined. It's a it's a daily relational thing, and it's a thing of showing initiative and care for people who God has placed in our lives. Yeah, and there's such a payoff. I always talk about the payoff on my show. There's always a payoff to doing this, you know, and with our families, the payoff, like for me, my payoff is watching my family blossom. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it's because not to pat myself on the back, but because uh, I chose to do what was right. And I then saw what influence that had on my my family and them watching me yeah. grow, just living that life and changing things within me, not beating them over the head, telling them they need to do this, this and that. 
but just me changing my stuff. I, I don't realize the impact I had on others because the enemy wanted me to think you don't have an impact. That's right. These guys, my like praying with my wife is the hardest thing, Carrie, I do. It's the hardest thing I do because I have this enemy's voice in my ear saying, well, she knows you better than anybody. What a, you're such a hypocrite, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it's the one thing that endures my wife to me even more yeah. is when I pray with her. Yeah. And I had that is that demon I have to fight all the time. And and not give it stronghold, but the more I follow through, the more I do it, the less that voice is inside my head. Yeah, that it. is that is so powerful, Michael. I think that all of us get this voice in our heads that tells us we're not up to snuff or we're not adequate for the, the thing that's been placed on us. But the reality is uh, our wives and our children are not looking for us to be impervious to all harm and to be Superman. They are looking for us to be wise enough and humble enough to depend on the God of the universe and, and elicit his help. That brings yes. security. That brings a, a sense of well-being to our families when they know, well, even if dad doesn't totally get it all, he's going to the one who does. And my goodness, what a security that brings to a family. Yes. And it doesn't matter where you're at right now. What matters is that you take the steps. You could be the 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 worst guy in the world right now, have a drinking problem, have a drug addiction. You could be in divorce. Uh, and I had people say, well, I'm already divorced. My family, I have no influence over my family. Well, that's a lie. First mm -hmm. off, that's just, that's just a lie. We have to start somewhere and there's no better place than to start right where you're at right now. It's making a commitment and it's, it's not a short commitment either. I don't think, but we have influence over them. And I thought it was impossible. I felt those same things that people feel. I think we all have that as men, but I noticed that it's, it's just taking it, you know, it, literally taking that one day at a time. Yeah. And that sounds so cliche to everything, but it's a reality and truth one day at a time. So, my listeners that are out here that let's say, Carrie, they're going through, they're, they're at their darkest moments in time. How would you encourage them at this point moving forward? And what, what are some maybe resources that you might recommend that you know would help? Yeah. Well, I first off want to say that uh, my prayers and my heart are with you. If you're in that circumstance, I know that we all have uh, those monumental places in our life where something tragic happens or some some big loss occurs that really shape us and really kind of put us in the furnace of testing to determine what kind of man we're going to be. Right. And I think one of the greatest character traits that we can cultivate in a time like that is the character trait of humility. Just learning uh, that that God in his wisdom has ordained for this circumstance in your life doesn't mean he wanted it to happen exactly like it did because people make Correct. choices and people bring about uh, circumstances in your life that, that you never expected. But Correct. it does mean that he's over that circumstance and he's using it for your good. And so yes. cultivating humility and a sense of, of dependence on him and his good plan for you, even in the midst of the tragedy, is step number one. And a resource that I found to be extremely helpful is a book by a guy named Andrew Murray, and it's called humility. It's just simply humility. Mm -hmm. And Michael, I don't say this about resources outside the scriptures very often, but this book has mm -hmm. changed my life. It's a book I read at least once a year. And it's, it's one of those that you read two or three sentences or a paragraph, and you just have to stop and chew on it because it's so thick with good theological meat. And, and you find yourself getting through one of the short chapters and just having to take a breath and, and say, oh God, there's so much in there that you're applying to my heart right now. Uh, I want you to do your work in me fully as I go through this. And, and I would recommend to guys, get that book, read that book. Don't rush through the book. Just read it sentence, paragraph at a time and write down your thoughts. Let the Lord work in you to create humility in you. Wow. Yeah. I just wrote that down myself and I'm like, uh, I, I think that's a that's a great place for me, me even to to start 
at, but I, I love great books that are life changing for us. Mm. And you said a word in there. Sometimes I think people get scared when we say it, it has good theology in it and things like that. And it's like, but we need theology in our life. We need to yeah. understand the scriptures better. And yeah. sometimes a good book will help us to learn that a little bit and to understand that a little, a little bit. More. Yeah. And, and if we simplify the word theology is simply the study of God. And mm. so we're, we're learning about who God is. We're learning what he thinks about the world and life and how things work. And there's no more noble pursuit than that. And no more life-giving pursuit than that either. So if we can just simplify the concept in our minds and think this is not about degrees and big words, this is about knowing a person. And it's yes. the most vibrant personality in all of creation. And, and, and he's accessible to us. Hmm. That's right. I, I want to ask you another question because one of your type, one of the titles I have on the screen here is that you're a Bible teacher. Okay. I think that is so crucial for us. Uh, you, and I liked what you said when you recommended this book, you said outside of the Bible, I would recommend this book. I think, a lot of times I think people get into reading so many books that it's easy to not read the scriptures. And the, I can't stress enough to men how important it is for us to be in those scriptures. What I hear a lot of times from guys is that it's, it's intimidating to them mm. yeah. or they don't know where to start. I always tell someone who's never read before, start with John, start in the book yeah. of John, you know, but for a lot of men, they're like, it's just intimidating. For me, I come from a, a, a circle, not to offend people, but I come from a circle where it was just King James Version only. Yeah. And that was, that's where I struggled. Now that I'm using a different uh, version, um, I'm having a lot better understanding because it's more my language now. Right. And so I have a better understanding. Sometimes it is a mindset. We have to think outside of the box of where we were, but these resources, these, these like the book humility, I imagine what you're saying is uh, it helps us alongside the scriptures and learning. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And I think that most of us feel intimidated by the Bible when we first start. Because if you look at it, it's a big, thick book. How many of us read thick books? You right. Know, not, not that many. And it's once you get into it, you realize it's actually an encyclopedia of books. <laughs> it's a collection yes. of books that are all different by different authors. They all tie together around the same things. But, but you know, it, it's just hard to make sense of it at first because it's not a linear progression. You don't read from Correct. Genesis to Revelation and make sense of all of it necessarily. And right. so my encouragement to people is like you, the book of John is a great place. I also encourage people just to take it bite at a time. Uh, that's yeah. part of why I publish my podcast. It's a it's a six minute daily devotional. So my thinking behind it when I began was we all need to start our days with our minds aligned mm -hmm. with the truth of God. And so if I can provide a six minute shot every morning to help people get their mind in the right place based on scripture as they begin the day. So whether they're putting on their makeup or they're driving in the car or they're on the treadmill, whatever, they're getting started with their day in the right place. And you build on that. And here it is, sep September of 2022. We're currently going through a series in the book of Proverbs. I mean, there's no better place to get started right. than in Proverbs. You can learn these basic, simple principles about life, about relationships, about interaction with God. And so if the morning mindset sounds like something that would be helpful to you, I would encourage you uh, find it on your podcast player or app and just join us as we daily get our minds aligned with the truth of God's word. And that's a great recommendation. I'll put, the, I'll put the link for that in our description with, with you because I, I really, obviously I'm into podcasts now because I'm doing a podcast, but I love listening to podcasts, um, mm -hmm. finding good ones, things that help me. Cause like I said, going back to what I said earlier, uh, it's what we pour into ourselves that's going to flow out of us. Right. And what a better way than to find some great podcasts. And I like what I like about your podcast, six minutes. Yeah. Right there. It's a great focus. One of my favorite podcasts I like to listen to is Stephen Furtick, but Stephen Furtick can be an hour long. And there are yeah. some days I'm like, I can't do an hour right now. So I look for shorter ones, things that are going to encourage me, but also help me be intentional in my walk 
with Christ and growing my faith with him. So I want to put that in the description of it. But before we close here today too, Carrie, I want to ask you if you would go ahead and tell us a little bit, where can they go for the podcast? We will put a description in it. Uh, I know you have some writings and things like that, that you've done. Uh, you have a web page. Tell us just a little bit of that. So our listeners can explore those. Yeah. Well, the podcast, the easiest way to do it is whatever app you listen on, just search for the morning mindset. And you're going to see the image with a woman sitting on a bench, looking out a window at the sunrise. That's the right podcast. And you can just subscribe right there in your app. If you're not familiar with podcasts, the best way to find out about it is to go to my personal website and it's carriegreen.com. And I'll spell my name. It's a little different. It's C-A-R-E-Y green, just like the color.com. You'll find the podcast there right on the front page. You'll also find out about so, the books that I've written on that page. There's a blog that I produce weekly. There's there's just all kind of resources there that you can find. That's awesome. And I'm I'm doing that as we as we speak uh, to do that. I'm, you know, usually I try to listen to the podcast, and I did listen to a few things on yours, uh, and. I see where you guys, you help you. You guys have a lot going on. I enjoy, I want to ask my listeners, go to carriegreen.com and look at, uh, I was watching a video of you and your wife. Uh, you guys really are out there helping a lot of people doing a lot of great things. Out well, there. I, so I, I appreciate that, Michael. It's been a work of the Lord all the way along. We just try and follow every step as he opens the doors and, I think what you're referring to there on the video is a, a nonprofit that we've been able to establish to help people who have real needs, uh, get those needs met through other believers who are able to come alongside and give because they've been blessed. And so uh, it's, it's really taken off. It's been a lot of fun to see that happen and to be blessed in the, in the process of being the conduit between those two people. And can you tell us, cause I really want to encourage my listeners. I really want to ask you guys, some of you who have been blessed, some of you that you're like, how can I give back some of what God's done for me. Here's a great avenue to go to. And uh, it, we'll put the description. It's at, it's at carriegreen.com and you can you can see that link. But can you tell us, give us, is there any stories that stick out of someone that you've helped, people that you've helped that you can share that might encourage our listeners to go check this out? Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, there's so many stories. It's, it's hard to pick one, but there's one I remember that was right toward the beginning of our time of starting this ministry. It was a, a young man in California who had loads of debt because of a previous drug addiction. He was clean and sober, had been for eight to, to 10 months and had gotten himself a job, was established, was moving forward in life, but his debt was just overwhelming him. And I know many people would say, well, he kind of made his own bed. He needs to lie in it, but we didn't see it that way. We saw it as an opportunity to demonstrate the love and grace and compassion of God, even in our worst moments. And so we verified his need was legitimate. We placed that on the website and people generously gave to meet those needs and, and just removed all of his debt. And I'm telling you, Michael, that guy's life was transformed not only just through the generosity but through the demonstration of god's grace that it was to him and he's still walking with the lord he's still moving forward in his life he's still on track and that's just one of many stories we have people from all over the world who have submitted needs and have had some of those needs met we've had we recently are helping a woman get a roof on her house replaced i mean all kinds of different situations, medical bills, um, people unemployed, people who just need groceries, all kinds of things. There's opportunities there uh, just th that just keep coming. And we're, we're so glad that the Lord is, is using this effort. Wow. And that's, and I commend you guys because, you know, help uh, getting pouring into someone else is, it's, it's so rewarding and mm -hmm. there's such a payoff. Mm -hmm to yeah. it that was one thing that that was one thing that stuck out to me on your website me and my wife were uh looking at le at it last night while we were uh while i was trying to prepare for this podcast and it, it kind of touched us we would you know with that and you know so we're we're looking into that as well because we don't always have the opportunity god presents someone like you who has the opportunity where you can you find the person with the need. And so some of us who, Hey, you know what? I can, I, 
I have an extra hundred dollars this, this month. What can, what can I do with that to help towards it? You get enough people with $25, a hundred dollars, things like that, that can help. It really combined. You can see the work that God's doing and there's nothing better than to see God do something that only God can do. That's right. And to be a part of that. Yeah. And the story behind how this came about, if you don't mind me sharing real quick, Please. Is, is just so encouraging because my wife and I have always been touched by the example we see in Acts chapter four, where it says all of them were, were living in common and they, uh, they were giving as each had need so that none among them had a need. And, and that's just always been inspiring to us. And so when this podcast was rolling along, we began receiving prayer requests from people who were saying, I have this need. Can you pray for this? I have this medical bill. Can you pray for this? And my wife was processing all those things. And she said, there has to be a way we can connect a person who has resources with these people who have needs. How could we do that? And I knew all the technology side of things by then. And so I said, well, of course it can happen. I mean, Venmo exists, PayPal exists. We can figure right. this out. And so it just took a, a very short matter of time to set up a nonprofit, to put the, the technology in place, to enable people to submit needs. Then we have a team that verifies and vets those needs. And then we place them on the website as an opportunity for people to give. And it's just been such a blessing to see how God took that vision and he's using it so that believers in Christ can bless believers in Christ. And at this point, 100% of what people donate, whether it's $5 or $500, goes to the need that they're donating it to. That's awesome. That's awesome. Me and my wife were, were, are, were examples of what you just talked about. When we, we were out of church um, and, and bitter and all that, mm -hmm. and, and God brought the right pastor to our, to our home, a friend of ours, a friend of mine that I grew up with, sick, suck him on me, stuck him on me or whatever you want to say. And he came after us and, and just prayed with us was an example. We went to start going to church. We were raw. We were hurting. We were mm. financially devastated. Just lots of things going on in our lives that other people did not know. And, um, he said, one of the best thing you can do is, is serve. Let's get you on a serve team. We started serving and in that we started building relationship and it was other people pouring into this. It was so overwhelming. Yeah. And there was a time, I remember there was a time we, we didn't have a refrigerator. Our refrigerator went out and we start, we joined this class, D Dave Ramsey course at the church. Mm -hmm. And it was so overwhelming. We went to that class. We had to go through it twice to get, <laughs> to get it going because yeah. the first time it was just so overwhelming because we didn't have two pennies to rub together. And we were in there, our refrigerator went out and we're like, how are we going to do it? And we've been talking about how God's going to provide. And we started tithing. We didn't even have the money to tithe, you know, and we're like, but we're trying to be obedient. We're trying to do this. And someone in there said, Hey, I, we're just going to ask, um, we have, we just bought a new home. They have, it's a brand new refrigerator, but we just bought a brand new refrigerator. We like anyone in here need one. And oh, my wow. wife just started crying. And walk, mm. walked out. She, she didn't even answer them. And they're like, did we say something <laughs> wrong? And I'm like, well, our refrigerator went out. And they're like, well, ours is yours. And yeah. it, we have it to this day. That was five years, uh, five, six years ago. And we have it today. Yeah. It's a, it was a brand new refrigerator. And that's it's amazing how God works. But that act of kindness to this day still speaks. And there's so many of these acts of kindness that God threw our way. And now I look at where we're at and I'm amazed. It, yeah. it shows what it does when we, we have those act of kindness come to, it shows us how much God loves us yeah, and that God is not far from us. That's right. And I think those catalytic moments when some amazing provision of God comes our way, cements us to him to a greater yes. degree where our faith is strengthened and we, we recognize who the one is who gives blessing and who the one is who has committed himself to us. And, and there's no turning back from there. There's not. Carrie, thank you so much for being on here. I've been blessed today. I love this. I want to encourage my, my listeners go to Carrie, uh, green.com C A R E Y G R E E N.com. If you're listening to us, go there, look, so many great resources on there. 
nothing better than to pour into someone else too. If you're going through a hard time, sometimes the best thing is to get outside of yourself too, but just pray about it. Go look at this website. Um, and Carrie, thank you so much for being on here thank you, today Mike. with us and God bless you and, and the ministry that you. Mm -hmm.